risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. My name is Pastor Lawrence Richardson and welcome to Easter Sunday worship at Linden Hills United Church of Christ. Please join me in the call to worship. The stone was rolled away. What did, what did they, they find? find? An empty tomb. An empty tomb is what they found. What, what did we do? do? Let us praise. Let us worship. Our mourning has been turned into dancing. Prophecy has been fulfilled. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Let us pray together. Dear God, we thank you for this day, for this Easter Sunday. We ask that you be present in our time of worship now. We thank you for the gift of technology and your Holy Spirit that connects us to one another and to you. We thank you for all of the creativity and energy and ideas and love that went into this worship service today. And we ask that you bless us and bless all of it. In the name of Jesus Christ and in your holy and many sacred names we pray. Amen. Happy Easter, friends. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Today, we celebrate one of the most important days of the church year. We celebrate Easter because Jesus rose from the dead and came back to life and is living today. Many times we have heard the Easter story, how Jesus died on the cross and three days later rose again. The story is a, a surprise for us because we know the ending. But Easter is a wonderful celebration. Early on Easter morning, the women went to the tomb where Jesus had been laid. When they arrived, they noticed the big stone being rolled away from the entrance to the tomb. And when they entered the tomb, they found it empty. The only thing inside the tomb were the cloths that were laid around Jesus' body. An angel appeared to them and told them that the man they were looking for was not there. The women ran from the tomb, too scared to say anything. Of course, Jesus did tell them that he would die and rise again. But when it actually happened, it was a huge shock for the women. It was hard for them to accept. One of the symbols of Easter is a butterfly. It symbolizes new life. Now imagine that you had a caterpillar. The caterpillar will spin a chrysalis. And I didn't have any pictures of a chrysalis, so I had to ask Miss Wendy to send me one. So this is a picture of what a chrysalis is. And a caterpillar will spin a chrysalis. So you have a pet caterpillar. The caterpillar will spin a chrysalis. Then nothing happens for a while. If you didn't know that butterflies came out of chrysalises, you would think that your pet caterpillar had died. You would be very sad. But one day you would see the chrysalis empty and a beautiful butterfly flitting about. Butterflies are reminders of Jesus's resurrection. Like the butterfly that comes out of the chrysalis, Jesus came out alive from the tomb. Happy Easter. Today's scripture reading comes from John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. The resurrection of Jesus. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there. He did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there. 
and the cloth that had been on Jesus's head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. She did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Here ends the reading for our word for today. May God add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the pondering of these holy and sacred words. Please pray with me. Holy One, I thank you for this Easter Sunday, this Resurrection Day, this opportunity to begin again and celebrate new life. I ask that you be with me now as I deliver these brief but blessed words to the gathered people. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you give us strength, dear God, and you redeem us. Amen. Happy Easter. Today is the highest holy day for us as Christians because we proclaim and profess a faith that is built upon the foundation of resurrection. It is also the final Sunday in our Lenten sermon series, Navigating Through a Liminal Season, based on Susan Beaumont's book, Leading when you don't know where you're going, navigating through a liminal season. The four ways that Susan Beaumont has shared with us that we have learned how to navigate through the liminal season is tending the soul of the institution, deepening group discernment, shaping institutional memory and clarifying purpose. Today on Easter Sunday, we are going to talk about engaging emergence. And one of the wonderful things I love about the story of Easter is what Miss Edith shared with us, is that it's similar to a butterfly being born into the world. When we think about how a, the caterpillar becomes a butterfly, there is a period where there is death or what appears to be death. In Jesus's case, when we honored his death on Good Friday, and we honored the burial of Jesus in the tomb. We on Holy Saturday sat with Jesus there. And I invited if those of you who read the reflection yesterday to think about what we needed to place in the tomb alongside Jesus. You see, there is darkness and there is despair, but if we look at it in a different way, we see the tomb as a womb, as an opportunity for new life to generate 
and new life to be created so that on the other side, new life can emerge. On this Easter Sunday, I invite us to consider as we have navigated through this liminal season and as we are currently navigating a liminal season in our world, in our lives, in our congregation, in our society, there are things that we hold on to surely from our past that we bring forward. There are things that we release absolutely that we no longer find useful or that will no longer serve us. And we clarify our purpose so that we know who we are on the other side of the change, of the seasons, of the newness of life. And as new life emerges, we have to also be mindful of what's rising within each of us. As you think about the resurrected Christ and the invitation to live a life of faith that believes in the resurrection promise, what rises up within you? On this Easter Sunday, I want you to go forth from this place and all of our holy spaces knowing that new life is in you. New life is all around us and new life is emerging every day. How do we engage the new life that's rising within and all around us? That's the story of Easter, how we engage. Do we carry the story with us and run and share it with everyone who will hear it? Do we allow that story to live in us and through us? Do we become like the butterfly as we emerge from the tomb with new life? How do we engage on the other side? My friends, I bring us to the conclusion of this very brief but hopeful promise and message that on the other side of liminality, on the other side of challenges, on the other side of the cocoon, there is new life, new life waiting to emerge and new life waiting to be engaged. And how we engage the life that is emerging is up to us. May it be so, amen.
Now we arrive at the time in our service where we share our joys and our concerns, our prayer reports and our praise reports. If you have anything that you would like to share, you can do so in the chat if you are on Zoom. Uh, if you are viewing on Facebook or YouTube, you can add your prayer request or your praise report in the comment section of those posts as well. For privacy reasons and because this is streaming live, I will not read each of the prayer requests that come through, uh, but just know that your prayers and your presence are in my thoughts, in my hearts, and we now join together in prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, on this Easter Sunday, on this high holy day, we come before you, before your empty tomb, with praise in our hearts, thanking you for the miracle of resurrection, thanking you for the miracle of new life. And whether symbolically or literally, we all take this story of resurrection to mean something different. For some of us, this resurrection story gives us hope in new life, hope that whatever is on the other side is, is new life that we can engage and that we will be all right engaging. And for some of us, this Easter story is an invitation to begin again. God, we have all placed things either on the cross or in the tomb beside Jesus. Things that needed to die, things that needed to be reborn, things that needed to be repurposed, things that needed to be transformed. And just like Jesus, we come from that tomb, we emerge from that tomb new. And we thank you for this newness of life and all that it brings. God, we know that there is a lot of suffering in our world. We know that the promise of Easter and the hope of resurrection doesn't blind us to the reality that there is death and destruction and hatred all around us. God, we are asking for the same power that gives us hope in a resurrection to give us the ability to bring peace to your world through our thoughts and habits and actions. We ask for you to move through us, live through us, and be the promise through us that brings the peace. For you said in your word that you would not leave us alone, but that you would send an advocate who would be with us and would advocate on our behalf. And that advocate, the Holy Spirit, gives us the power that we need to live each day and to approach each moment as a new opportunity for life to emerge. God, we lift up our hearts to you right now in this space of silence because we know that you are with us and we know that you hear our prayers. God, you are with us. Hear our prayer. And now let us share together the words that Jesus taught his friends, followers, and disciples using the name for God that resonates most closely within.
our creator, our mother, our father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, my friends, if you have not already done so, I invite you to assemble your communion elements, wine, water, juice, or milk, uh, crackers, cookies, uh, bread, or wafer. And once you have assembled your item, then I invite you to return back to your screen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed and sold into prison and preparing for trial and later execution, he gathered with his friends and his followers for dinner. And after dinner, he gave thanks and he took bread and he said, this is my body given to you, you, broken for you. Every time you eat of this bread, I want you to do so remembering me. And in the same way, he took a cup, the cup of new covenant, the cup of blessing, and he said, this cup represents my blood, my life, my new covenant promise poured out for you. And every time you drink of this cup, I want you to do so, remembering me. My friends, this is the bread of life and this is the cup of liberation. And as you consume your elements, I want you to do so, remembering Jesus. Christ is risen. Now, let me say it again. Christ is risen. I don't know about you, but that is the most exciting news that I have ever heard. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. And whether it is symbolic or metaphorical for you, the same power that can rise up Jesus is the same power that flows in us and through us. So as you go out into the world, into your separate spaces and places, might you declare, might you live, might you proclaim, might you love the good news. Christ is risen, my friends. Christ is risen indeed. Go in peace. Amen.